All right, with the revival of Monster Hunter 3, I've had a handful of people ask for tips on hammering a Latreon. This video is my best effort to outline everything I know, including key openings, positioning, KO sequences, and everything in between. Uh, I'll be the first to acknowledge that this video is about 12 years past its prime and will be useful to maybe four people, but I love this game, so I'm happy to share what I know. This video is going to cover all the fundamentals that will get you out there busting sky piercers like the pros, so grab a pencil, grab a drink, and strap in. First, let's establish the hammer's moveset and the terminology we're going to be using. Hammer's strongest sequence is called the triple combo, which can be reset by tapping the R trigger for a quick level 1 charge. This is your highest damage combo. Holding the R trigger up to the level 2 charge will release an uppercut, which deals mediocre damage but decent KO damage. It's good for closing gaps if you're a little far away. Releasing a level 3 charge without moving will produce a Super Pound, which deals decent damage and the highest possible KO damage from a single attack. This move is really your bread and butter. Releasing a level 3 charge while moving will start the spin attack. Pressing the attack button immediately will release a short backhand swing, but you pretty much never want to do this. Instead, pressing the attack button after you've spun three times will release a golf swing. This is the highest damage from a single attack and deals the same KO damage as a super pound. High risk, high reward. A trick for releasing the golf swing is to listen for the audio cue. You'll want to press the attack button as soon as you hear the third little swooshing sound to get the golf swing out as fast as possible. Let's listen. Another thing worth noting is that the triple combo's final swing can be angled left or right by holding the analog stick. You'll be using this to make small adjustments during knockouts. Next, let's look at Latrion's KO stats. Knockouts, otherwise known as KOs, last 15 seconds, with the initial KO requiring 120 KO damage. Each next KO will add 120, maxing out at 600. He will recover 5 KO damage every 10 seconds. How does this translate to a hammer? Super Pound and Golf Swing both deal the most KO damage at 48 base, but with Purple Sharpness they get a 1.5 multiplier and thus deal 72 KO damage. Now you might say, hold on man, this is a lot of math. And I agree. So here's the shortcut table. It goes 2, 4, 5, 7, 9 in terms of super pounds being a general unit. That's all I do, and it gets the job done. You also might say, is knowing these values actually important? And the answer is yes if you want to do the cool stuff. It's not critical, but it makes your life easier to have a rough idea of when the next KO is coming. Speaking of cool stuff, let's start hitting things. First, we're going to look at the Dragon Rush, which is a fairly straightforward and easy to execute opening. Alatrion's Dragon Rush attack can either go past you or stop directly in front of you with a head swing. If it's the latter, you can release a Super Pound as Alatrion's head is swinging upward in order to hit it on the way down. If the early stop is going to happen, Alatrion will whip his head at the exact point you were standing when he targeted you. So in this case, that's right here. Keep an eye on this spot. If you see his head swing backwards like this, release your Super Pound as his head moves up. This timing works pretty much the same for Rage Mode and Non-Rage Mode. Uppercuts are also a viable option. Okay, but what if Alatrion doesn't stop short and instead runs past you? Well, you have a few options, the easiest of which are uppercuts. Uppercut positioning isn't too strict. As long as you're standing at about his middle tail spike, you should be fine. At the end of the Dragon Rush, Alatran will swing his tail to the right, then left, then right again, and finally back to the center. When enraged, you'll want to begin charging your hammer on that second right tail swing. When not enraged, you'll want to wait a little bit longer and charge as his tail is moving back to the center. Hey. 
But hey, you probably already knew about the Dragon Rush and Uppercuts. You're here for the cool stuff. You want to hit golf swings. The golf swing is your highest damage option and, once you have the timing down, is actually pretty easy to hit consistently. We'll start with the Enraged version. Similar to the uppercut, you'll want to start spinning when Elatrian's tail moves to the right for that second time. Now the golf swing does not happen the moment you press the button. Do you remember what I said about the audio cue? You'll want to press the button when you hear the third swooshing sound. Let's watch this clip again without all the slow-mo. For rage mode, it's very important to note, these are high risk, high reward. The golf swing is not always safe when a Latreon is in rage. Sometimes you get lucky, other times you get flat. It's best to reserve the Rage Golf Swings for when you know something is going to happen, like a KO, or breaking his charged horns. However, Golf Swings on non-Enrage Elatrion are so safe that I would recommend it as your first priority option in solo play. Releasing the spin happens at the same time as before. That's when the tail moves to the right for the second time. The only difference is you should hold off on pressing the attack button until the fourth swooshing sound. Now, if counting swooshes isn't your thing, you can also press the button as soon as Elatrion starts turning around. It's whichever is easier for you. The last turning option, but certainly not the least, is the turning super pound, aka the turn a pound. The turn a pound is by far the hardest option to execute, but unfortunately, it's also the fastest, safest, and highest KO damage option. Golf swings do deal more damage, but turn a pounds are far more efficient and versatile. Let's start with positioning. From the tail's right side, you'll want to stand at Elatrion's third tail spike. That's right here. From the left side, you'll actually stand a little bit closer at the first spike of his tail fin. That's right here. It's all about the timing, though. You need to release the Super Pound just before Elatrion is about to turn. Using the tail as a guide, you'll release the Super Pound at the exact moment that the tail is centered. So you've got all your fancy moves for getting KOs, but now that you've gotten a KO, what's the best way to deal damage? I'm going to walk you through the three best options, but I will also show you a couple variations you can do instead. The first knockout pattern is the Rage Mode outside KO, which is the best possible option for damage. Let's watch an example first. I'd say the hardest part of this pattern is getting into position. As soon as Elatrion starts falling, you have just about enough time to get three steps backwards. Ideally, you want to be lined up with Elatrion's shoulder blades, like where his wings start. When he's fully hit the ground, quickly turn around and start attacking. Your hit should connect at the furthest point his head swings backwards. From there, you're in the clear. 
Three triple pounds with no combo resets, truly the most possible damage you can fit into a single KO. Getting into position is surprisingly forgiving. You can start swinging from a pretty wide range and Alatrion's head will still just push you into the correct spot. Uh, that said, you can be a full head swing late and still land 8 of the 9 hits. And the last thing, I just want to point out that turning uppercuts are not good at converting to the outside KO. They just push you too far forward, and you can't get to position in time. But sometimes, you're not in the right spot to do the outside KO. For that, the alternative option is the inside KO. Let's watch. This one is pretty straightforward. As Latrion is going down, all you have to do is take a small step to the right and immediately start attacking. His head will land right underneath your hit. The finishing super pound is not as hard as it looks. Just start walking into his neck as you charge. You should reach the level 3 charge at the same time Alatrion is going to stand up. So as soon as you see him move, just release it. And sometimes, you're not always in the perfect position for that first hit the instant Alatrion goes down. Usually that's on golf swing KOs, that's fine. If you're one head swing late, you can just not do the combo reset, and the pattern will still work. Okay, last up is the non-rage mode pattern. It's pretty similar to the Rage inside KO, but you have enough time to finish with a full golf swing, which actually makes it the second best damage behind the outside KO. Let's take a look. The hardest part of this one is timing all the swings. Alatrion's head moves a lot slower when not enraged, but just like the inside KO, you should start attacking while he's still falling. This time, if you'll notice, you were actually trying to get off two full hits, just mash the button. From there, the attacks are the same. Even the golf swing is the same, you just walk into the neck and release the spin as soon as you hit that level 3 charge, count those swooshes, and swing for big damage. Also like the rage version, longer hits like golf swings will prevent you from getting both of those first hits off. If that happens, you can actually just do the rage version and finish with a super pound. You'll just have to be mindful of hitting things a little bit slower. One final thing about KOs, if Alatrion's horns are charged and flashing blue, you really want to break him out of that state before getting a KO. If he KOs with the charged horns, you'll actually stop the KO short as soon as that damage threshold is reached.
With these KO patterns in mind, generally speaking, you want to favor Elatrion's left side during rage mode and his right side for non-rage mode. This is where that KO cheat sheet I showed earlier comes in handy. If you know a KO is coming, make sure you're standing in the right place. In fact, being on his left side for fireballs actually gives you a lot more time and distance to land a hit because his head trails to the left. I've saved the best for last. Stop rushes. Aside from looking awesome, these are legitimately useful. For speedruns, they save a good amount of time and are much more reliable than praying you land a turnapound. The best time to go for a stop rush is when Elatrion does his jump back fire. He will usually follow it up with a dragon rush. From this distance, just release the super pound as soon as his head is moving downward. That's it. This works for rage mode. And non-rage mode. That just about covers it all. Here are a couple last things that I couldn't really fit anywhere else. You can do turning single pounds by standing sideways at the tail. They're one of the only safe things you can use to respond to a dive bomb attack. Uh, I don't use them as often as I probably should. You can also respond to the dive bomb attack with a reverse turn a pound or uppercut. These are flashy, but they are not safe. If he fireballs, you're dead. I think that's all I got. This is by far the most work I've ever put into a video, and hopefully those of you enjoying the Monster Hunter 3 server project can put these tips to use. Uh, I'm not a real YouTuber, but if you made it to the end, I would really appreciate if you liked this video or left a comment, actually. I don't care about the algorithm, but it'll just make me feel good. Happy hunting!